What's going on, guys? Alec here from Oz Fury Gaming. A bit crook today, so I apologise if it puts anyone off, but uh, I thought there was enough in the round of verse and the Eclipse Q&A to really push through my sickness and to get you guys some good info. So to start us off with, I'm showing here a bit of Port Olisar, what it's going to look like once they start implementing advertisement NPCs, really starting to make it feel like a real-life place where you know, people actually live and come here and do stuff. Now, another thing that they showed off too was what can look like in different situations. And one of those situations was if a Vandal fleet actually attacks. Now, I'm not sure about you, but if I was these NPCs, I wouldn't be just standing around with my hands on my hips like, oh, not this shit again. I'd be more like, ah, let's get the hell out of here. Like, uh, especially considering there's some capital ships rocking up. Not quite sure what type of sh capital ships they are, but one looks like to be a driller class. It's just a bit hard to tell from that short stint. Now, I've sped this section up, but what they're showing here is basically going from uh, creating a sort of bland, matte sort of uh, art type for the Dark Soul of Moons and actually really implementing them as a uh, colour type of uh, lighting. So, as you see, they're playing around there with the different darknesses and the different colour tones. Also, with Levski been working on the in, uh, exterior, it's grown quite a fair bit. Uh, also, the interior has been getting a bit of love, which is nice to see. Uh, obviously, if you guys have been paying attention to the production schedule, Levski is a uh, landing zone, and Delmar will be coming in for 3.0. They've extended the, the uh, schedule to anywhere from the 7th of July to the 20th of July for the final release date. Also, they've been adding in bigger uh, external mining platforms that we can go explore and have a look at. And also, too, they've been working on the uh, art types and the assets to make them more fundamentally usable in-game and much clearer and much more lifelike. As well as the biomes, they've been working on increasing the density for those. Now, then moving on to the moons, guys, we have here... What they're showing off is the difference between the before and after of uh, the details of the moon. So, as you can see there, they've got these nice little bits of rocks and stuff going on. They've really increased the depth of what the planet's going to be looking like. Here we have Daimar, which is my favourite moon, and it looks quite pretty in my opinion. See, we can go a bit of sand floating about, and just nice colour type in my opinion. After here as well, they were showing off a bit of yellow, just showing the arctic winds and a sort of, well, the way they'll be looking. So after that, guys, they also showed off uh, what the moons will be looking like from the outside. In regards to lighting, as you can see here, it looks really dull and matte with the uh, original lighting setup. But now they've been able to add what they call the night sky, which sort of gives a bit of a glow to certain parts of the moons, which I think adds a bit of colour and texture, but might overdo it a bit. So after looking at the landscape and the outside of moons, as we can see here, they're trying to land with ships on moons, and it's bouncing around. So the engineering team have been trying to tackle that and get that correct for 3.0. Because I could imagine it would cause all sorts of havoc with the physics when you're trying to land on Aquilia. So now we have AI turrets. So they talked a bit about how these will be implemented. So not just for turrets, but they'll be able to be used for AI, uh, autopilots, or multifunctions on massive cruise ships and stuff like that. So say, for example, if you had a Starfarer and you wanted to get away from having to hire NPCs, you can actually buy an AI unit that will go into the turrets, which will do the automated turrets. Uh, also, too, you can get uh, other AI to do, say, the um, just the autopiloting or the engineering stations and stuff like that. You can get the software and tune it to what you want it to do. Now, I can see this being a little bit overpowered because if you had a hot NPC, so we wouldn't hit all the time as the AI will be able to track and hit more effectively. Obviously, though, that Gladius here is firing fairly slow, so it's easier to hit. If you were really darting around, I could see there being a bit of a hassle trying to hit that vessel. Moving on with the AI, we've been seeing how they implementing uh, first-person shooting with the AI, so this will be mainly important for Squadron 42, but also as well if police and things like that come into uh, 3.0 in the PU, it would be an important part. Now, I feel sorry for this poor lady just getting absolutely shredded by these guys. So, they're sort of showing here how the animation works in, you know, behind cover and also to how they'll be attacking. Also, to be interested to see if there'll be different variant types of police guards and stuff like that, so, you know, more tactically trained and things to that extent. Uh, doors have been implemented for the 2.0 uh, in items, so that makes it able to effectively open and close doors a lot more uh, easier and not having to deal with the buggy use system that's been in uh, 2.6 and 2.5. Been working on planetary outposts as well, working on the artwork and the fidelity of those, just getting them nice and neat and ready for use. 
Now moving more to the tech side, guys, we can see here they've been trying to work on the servers, making them more robust and able to last longer for 3.0, which would be nice. As well as been working in Mannequin to create stuff for Squadron 42 and the PU in regards to animation work and humanoid uh, workings. Also, too, they've been working on the Vandal prototype and other guns as well. Also, too, they've been working on the Sprint tech and other first-person system tech. It's been nice to see how far it's come along. I did read on forums, though, so that apparently some people aren't enjoying the whole Sprint, thinking that it's going to really destroy the game, but this is a space sim. Leave in the comments, though, what you think about that idea, if you like it or not. Next up was for guns, skins. So for those who love to collect skins or just make your guns look absolutely fluorescent or badass, the ability is coming. Uh, for 3.0 or not, I'm unaware of, but this is just concept art for each gun, guys, so don't get too excited just yet. As well as first-person guns, they've been working on ship weapons. So they've had the Preacher armament, uh, scatter distortion guns. Uh, it's gone into like actual production work at a concept. And also, too, they've been working on the Apocalypse Arm scatter gun from size 1 to size 3. So as we can see there, that's getting fairly close to being finished. After that, they were showing off mocap, basically talking about how they can set up a small studio that, that allows a 3x3 metre grid of capture area. And they're just basically doing it for either background animation work or uh, small scenes like this where fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat comes to use. From here, they can actually grab the animation and like fine-tune it in uh, inside the computer and make it what it should be or what they want it to be. It's nice too just to see that not just for fighting but I could imagine this would be just handy for little NPC animations like if you're on Area 18 or Levski, you know, just people just hanging out and doing their own thing. It'd be handy to have. So after here guys, they were showing off uh, the array of systems that 2.0 has been worked for. So here we have the airlock showing off how you can walk through. This is just a grey box sort of phase. But it's just nice to see that they're actually working quite rigorously on getting all the stuff ready for 3.0. Uh, like I said before, the schedule date has been pushed back a little bit, but I'm not worried. As long as it comes out perfect for 3.0 with all they want to do, I ain't mad. When I say perfect, I mean, you know, nice. So here we have the Gladius and the Avenger, because these were the ships that were originally based for the Eclipse, and then they moved to the Sabre. Now, the Eclipse, guys, if you're unaware, is a stealth bomber which will carry 3 by size 9 torpedoes with 2 by size 2 guns, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But here they have the concept art showing what they wanted it to be and eventually grew out to be uh, quite, well, in my opinion, very, very uh, awesome looking. They did cut back a bit, but what they're showing here, guys, is the mechanism for the size 3 torpedo. So what will happen is it's on a rotisserie, so there'll be three on a mechanism that will turn around and allow it to fire like this. Now don't expect to be locking on quickly or anything like that. This ship will take a while to lock onto smaller targets, but bigger vessels like a Andromeda or something like that probably have a better chance. Now, the Eclipse is on sale still if you guys were interested in picking one up, but it will be a very, very niche ship. It will not be one to go and do dog fights or pick fights or to go really have any sort of big fights with. So here they're showing the guns how they come out, guys, because they are hidden. Now here they show to be Panthers, but as we read through the Q&A, they do talk about it being a Ballistics, but that's a bit later. Now the Q&A guys talked about Stealth for us, which was really nice to get an idea of what the Eclipse will be. So Stealth will be basically the ability to not be detected via scanners. Now this can come in multiple different forms in regards to the ship's uh, cross-sectional area, as well as the components of that ship, so you know the power plant, the engine, the uh, coolers, all that sort of stuff. So Basically, if the IR and the EM emissions are low, you won't be spotted, but the raw output and the durability of the vessel will be a lot less, as can be seen in comparison with the Saber versus Super Hornet. So, the Eclipse, guys, offers a unique ability, and that unique ability, guys, will be to mount specialty components. So, the power plant, shield generators, and all that will be tied to the specific ship. You may be able to swap them out if the sizes are correct plausibly, but we'll see how you go. But really, those parts are there for a reason. The ship's designed for a reason. Now, the next part I want to talk about was the game-breaking size 9 torpedoes of the Eclipse as a Polaris can carry size 10. <sighs> it's a knee-jerk reaction, in my opinion. Basically, the Eclipse is designed to get in and get out, and you need multiple ships, so it's very expensive to run. Okay, a Polaris is a capital ship, so that'll take a lot to run too. But a Polaris is a capital ship killer, and so is the Eclipse. 
but the Eclipse is designed for, you know, it could be on a carrier such as a Bengal or an Idris or something like that, as the Polaris is designed to be able to work independently and still be fairly nimble and quick and still carry another ship as an escort. Now, to talk about modularity for the Eclipse, there'll be no way to swap out the missile components for like cargo or anything like that. It stays as a dedicated bomber. And it's being a bomber too, it can do air to air and air to ground. So if you can lock on, you can kill it. Now the jump range too is going to be a medium jump range in regards to other bombers. Now can the Terrapin pick up the Eclipse? Well, it depends on the operator of the Terrapin versus the pilot of the Eclipse. Basically, if the Terrapin operator is able to detect the anomalies really well and knows what they're doing, it would be good. And if the Eclipse pilot can go around the Terrapin, well, even better. Now can the Eclipse kill an Idris or how, how well will it take it down and how many will you need? Well, basically a pair of Eclipses will be able to take down an Idris as long as the defense turrets are disabled and the shields are down and they're hit in exactly the right spot. So basically you need probably about five of them to take out an Idris to six of them if they had shields and everything up. But as such as an 890 Jump, for example, which is a sub-capital ship technically, um, will have a much harder time dealing with the damage that those Eclipses can deal. Now, we had a nice little uh, tidbit about how the Eclipse stacks up against the other bombers and what it does for us. So the Gladiator guys is a short-range bomber designed of dealing and taking damage, but I'd say on a more smaller scale. The Eclipse is a mid-range stealth bomber, big hit payload, not much else to it. The Harbinger is mid to long range, it's basically the next step up from the Gladiator, can take more damage and has more guns and armament, but without the stealth capabilities of the Eclipse, so you could rely on a, purely upon the hull of the ship to stay alive and the shields. Then we have the Retaliator, which is that next level up. Long range bomber, able to do the most damage with the ordinances available. Requires more crew to defend itself because it's relying upon the turrets. It's actually no main guns for the pilot to use. But it can sustain itself deep in space. Uh, it's just a different class of its own really in comparison, but it has issues with the capacity of actually being overwhelmed against larger ships or more ships. Hope you guys got a fair bit out of the information I've brought forward. This is just the major info. There's heaps of little bits there which I didn't feel were relevant. Uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video or just like obviously if you didn't like it. Have a comment too if you want to say something about what I thought or whatever. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more of the content. I hope to catch you guys around the verse. Toodaloo.